Good evening and welcome to the Anvil Bar here on Royal Island for our monthly squirt. And I see we have a fine crowd here tonight. People from many parts of the country there from Down East Cork, Bell and Colleague, Killeans in Cork, Killavullen, Carriganima. Where else? Jeez. Holly Hill is right. Japan, Japan Russia Royal and, and Royal Ed. <laughs> so, <laughs> and Brazil. <laughs> anyway, I welcome every one of you here tonight and we hope to have a good night. I know maybe Dan Jumelaine from Dunamore would start us off with a song and the Donner and Katie band may follow that on. No of them jobs. All yours. It was on a dreary New Year's Eve as the shades of night came down. A lorry load of volunteers approached a border town. They were men from Dublin and from Cork, Fermanagh and Tyrone. And the leader was a Limerick man, shuns out from Gary own and as they drove along the street up to the barrack door they knew the danger they would meet their fate that lay in store they were fighting for old Ireland's cause to gain their very own and the foremost of that gallant band was south from Gary own. But the sergeant filed their daring plan, he spied them through the door. The sten guns and the rifle, a hail of death did roar. And when that awful night had passed, Two men lay cold as stone. There was one from near the border and one from Gary own. No more they will hear the seagull cry or the murmuring Shannon side. For they died beneath that northern sky, brave handling by their side. They are gone to join that gallant band of Plunkett, Pierce and Tone. Yes, a martyr for old Ireland shines out from Gary own. Yes, a martyr for old Ireland shines out from Gary own. Thank you. Thank you, Dan Joe. That was Dan Joe from Dunamore. So now we go from a song to music with the Donnering Kitty Band. <laughs>
to the Donald Ring, Katie Ben, Donald and Michael and Eddie and to the dancers. Thank you very much indeed. So now we'll change and we'll have a song next. I think we'll change Jimmy Healy. He's very fresh looking there. <laughs> There's a place in this land, the land of my birth, a place that is heaven to me. Where I heard of sweet sound of laughter and song As I played around my mother's knee In the valley below where the wild roses grow And the river flows down to the sea There's a little thatched cottage with someone there With a welcome she's waiting for me Home, home, home once again, that's where I long to be. Down where silvery stream joins the river of my dreams. Home, home, home once again, that's where I long to be. Down with the friends that I love on the winding banks of the Lee. In a land far away I dream of the day when I'll be returning once more. From a crowded New York to my own county Cork, how I long to see Erin's green shore. Cougambara I know where the lee starts to flow, through McCroom in a scara and screen, past the dam and the dyke to Cork City Fair, till a cove it flows into the sea. Home, home, home once again, that's where I long to be, down where silvery streams joins the river of my dreams home 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 once again that's where i long to be down with the friends that i love on the winding banks of the lee on the winding banks of the lee I want a good round of applause here for Jimmy Healy for his song, first of all, and secondly, congratulate him for reaching the final of the over 60s. Yeah. Come on, give him one good round of applause for that. Thanks, Jimmy.
Now, what about Charlie Conway there? Maybe he do something for us. He's very comfortable looking there. I see that. That's why I wanted to upset you. Okay, I'm Thanks, nice. A country dog strolled into town whose Christian name was Pete. He had a pedigree ten yards long and his looks were hard to beat. But as he toddled into town, it was beautiful to see his mark on every corner, his mark on every tree. For Pete never missed a gateway. He never missed a post for Piddling was his masterpiece, and piddling was his boast. The city dogs, they gathered round, filled with jealous rage, to see this noble country dog, the piddler of his age. They sniffed him over one by one, and praise for him ran high, till one of them sniffed him on the knee, and Pete piddled in his eye. Then he showed the city dogs that he didn't give a damn. Pete strolled into the grocer shop, and he piddled on the ham. He piddled on the onions, and he piddled on the floor. And as the grocer kicked his arse, he just piddled out the door. <laughs> the city dogs, they gathered round, debating what to do, said, one, let's have a piddling contest. And we'll show the stranger just who is who. So they selected all the piddling posts from mines around the town. And they started out with many winks to wear the stranger down. But Pete was there at every post with vigor and with him. Sure, a thousand piddles were more or less all the same to him. Yes, on and on went our noble Pete, went hind leg kicking high, while most were lifting legs and bluff and piddling mighty dry. Then Pete went on and piddled every sand hill. The city, city champions were piddled to a standstill. Then Pete went on to give a demo of the many ways to piddle, like fancy flips and double trips, and now and then a dribble. On and on went our noble Pete, with vigor and with vim. He simply piddled out of town as he was piddling in. And the city dog said, so long, Pete, your piddling did defeat us. But none of them were there to know that Pete was suffering from piddling diabetes. A Persian pussycat, all fur perfumed and fair, strode down to the garden door for air. But a tomcat, tall, lean and strong, all dirty and yellow came along. He sniffed a while at the Persian cat, who strutted around with much eclat, and then wishing for some time to pass, he says, I say, baby, you really got class. Twas right and fitting was her reply as she arched a nibra over one eye, I'm ribboned and I sleep in a bed of silk and daily I'm fed on the certified milk. Folks ought to be happy with what they've got. I ought to be happy, but happy I'm not. Oh, I ought to be happy, oh, I ought to indeed, for I am so highly pedigreed. Hang on to the tomcat with a file and come down from your new found fence a while. you got to get down from your backyard fence. What you need is experience. Some untold tales he then unfolded, and he told her of the dangers of the outside world. But then at last, with a luring laugh, he suggests, a trip for two down the primrose path. Now the morning after the night before, our pussy got home at half past four. The innocent look from her eyes has went, but the smile on her face was a smile of content. Now sometime later, when the children came to this Persian pussy of pedigree fame. They weren't all white, they were black and tan, and she told him, Well, your pa, he was a traveling man. Yeah. Thanks, Charlie. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. That was Charlie Conway. Thank you, Charlie. I want to know, would Joan Goggin give us a song? So she will, of course. Would, uh, or whatever. Yours is no bother, sir. Give Joan a good round of applause. As I was strolling down the road, I spied a cosy, neat abode. The half door swinging open wide, you're welcome to drop in here. God save all here, he kindly <coughs> said. A red haired girl stuck out her head. God save you, sir, she kindly said. Come in and close the half 
door. She had a Krushkin placed upon her knees. Twas full of potatoes, I could see. And every one of them carefully she peeled before me eyes there. She looked at him with a roguish smile. Said she, come in and rest a while. Since you came back to Aaron's Isle, we never close the half door. Said she, play up the shaskin reel and I will make you happy feel. She turned right upon her heel and lifted off the half door. He played that tune with grace and style. With every note she winked and smiled until she had his heart beguiled while dancing on the half door. Said she, now, Sean, you'll have to stay until I wet a cup of tea, and then you can be on your way, and I'll hang up the half door. She didn't have to ask him twice. Her currant cake and tea was nice. Before he left, he kissed her twice, way leaning on the half door. I did it, lead, I did dum. I did it, lead, I did dum. Before he left, he kissed her twice, way leaning on the half door. Thank you, John. That was John Gowan. Give John a good round of applause there. Thanks, John. Thank you. Nigel, I wonder would you give us a couple of tunes there and we get onto Tim Heaney then after that. Give us a couple of tunes there for this this is the other half of my band. One time we've travelled the country, the length and breadth of the country.
Nigel. That was Nigel, didn't he? That's my nephew. Hi, <laughs> Nigel. We're back again in a minute. We'll join forces in a minute. So now, maybe Tim Healy would do something for us there. And uh, after that, we'd get a song from Mary Conway. These two brothers, they were both in their 80s. One was 82 and the other was 89. So they made a pact before they died, whichever one of them would go to heaven first, that he'd come back and tell the other fella how things were going on up there. So the 89-year-old fella died first, and after a while he got to heaven, and one night he came back on a Monday night to tell the brother how things were up in heaven. Now the younger brother, 82, he wasn't afraid really, like because he was expecting him to appear in the bedroom any night. So he appeared this night anyway, and he said, I eventually arrived in heaven, and tis a lovely spot. And I'm only looking forward to the day when you will be coming up to join me. So um, he said, I have, um, I have two snippets of news now for you. I have good news and I have bad news. You know, tell us the good news first. The good news is that there's hurling up there 24-7. Christy Ring is still burying the ball in the net. <coughs> Rumour had it when he was down in Klein that he'd blow the ass out of a galvanized bucket. So uh, the brother was absolutely thrilled and uh, he was just waiting to take off. By the way, he says, what's the bad news? Oh, you're in goals next Sunday. <laughs> in the month of December 1952, the children were in school and the teacher asked them to put up their hands to know what their mother was doing before they came into school. And this little boy stuck up his hand, miss, miss, miss. My mother was baking the Christmas cake. And how do you know that? Oh, she had raisins and curdles and sultanas and a big bowl up on the table. Excellent. Thanks very much. And the next little laddie in put up his hand. Uh, my mother was going feeding the hens. And how do you make out that? He had, she had crushed oats and a few more things. Very good. And a small little laddie in from the back put up his hand. And Well, Johnny, she says, what's your uh, mother doing? I think my mother was going hitchhiking. Hitchhiking in the month of December. Well, when my mother came down the stairs this morning, she cut the nightdress and flung it on the table and said to my father, I'm on the road again. <laughs> <laughs> Our school days by Patrick J. Duffy. I walked along the road today and it made me feel so glad. It brought me back the happy days when I was just a lad. It is the road I went to school with by it friends galore. And though we thought there were hard times then, I wish they'd come once more. I kept on walking just to meet the scholars of today and thought I'd hear in Gaelic tongue the words they'd use at play. So I sat down by the lawn style and hoped they'd come on hike. Instead, they all came round the bend astride all makes of bike. And each one had a passenger on the carrier or the bar. And those that did not come on bikes waved out from some kind parent's motor cap. How neatly are they dressed just now with heads of wavy hair? A change you'd know from our school days, we had it cut quite bare. They wore sandals on their feet with ankle socks to match. They had biros on their breasts and some wristlet watch. When we were young, we wore strong boots with nails and tips complete. And when the weather it got warm, we tramped on our bare feet. Now the roads are made to suit the cars, why you'd hardly see them pass. And still with this terrific speed, oh, we're often late for mass. I know some folks who cross the field a mile or two as well. Aye, they're in and have the rosary said along before the bell. So now, dear sir, I must conclude and wish you all the best. I'm glad you never spared the rod. It made us stand the test. So may the good God bless you and keep you in his care. May he bless all teachers. That is my final prayer. Thank you. Come on, Tim. Thank you very much, Tim.
Thank you. Now we'll stay in the same area. Maybe we could Mary Conway to give us a song if she can get out there. It is all yours. I wish I was in carried Fergus only for nights in Bali I would swim over the deepest ocean only for nights in Bali Grand. But the water's wide and I cannot swim over. Neither have I the wings to fly. I wish I had a handy boat now to ferry over my love and I. My childhood days bring fond reflections of happy hours we spent so long ago. My youthful friends and kind relations have all passed on now like the drifting snow. I spend my days in endless roving. Soft is the grass and my bed is free. Motto to be in carried Fergus on that long mountain road down to the sea. And in Kilkenny it is reported there's marble stone there as black as ink with gold and silver i did support you i'll sing no more till i take a drink i'm drunk tonight sure i'm seldom sober a constant rover from town to town oh but i am sick now my days are numbered come on and lay me down. Thank you. Thank you. One very special round of applause for Mary Pearl. Mary is a former winner of the over 60s. Come back a few years now. Thank you, Mary. Well done, Mary. Thank you. So now, where do we go from here now? What about Ted Meany there now next? He's awful comfortable looking there. By he carry giggle one fine summer's evening I strayed to view the green fields and the trees affording great shade. When who should I spy but a charming good looking dame? But for tons of bright gold, of course I won't tell her name. To view this young lassie, it was in the evening late, standing a while behind John O'Sullivan's gate. To welcome me kindly, this comely young lassie she came, 
My tartan's a bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. To bow and agree when I see my love come to prayer. Oh, my heart, it delights this comely young lassie to stare. She's free of all pride, and I am glad of the same. But for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. It's down by the line of this maiden goes herding her kind. Oh, you'd love to be near to hear her singing so fine. Her voice would outrival the nightingale's melodious strain. But for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. If I had my crew and the beautiful lands round the lee, and all the fine farms from Larney to Ballin agree, I'd give the man more of this comely young lass to obtain. But for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. When me and my darling together alone had been, traversing the mountains along by the top of sea fing, from kissing her sweet lips, of course, I could not refrain. But for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. Now when me and my darling in wedlock both unite, and the clergy well paid for their labours considered so light, until then I vow that her name I will not explain. Then without any gold, Sure, of course, she will all know her name. Come in, Ted. Come in, Ted. I will take me. Thanks, Ted. Now, there's a young man down there. He's a grand nephew of mine, actually. And we'll get him up here. He'll probably sing a song, or maybe he'll play a tune for us. He's a young little man. He's only six or seven. Come on, Donica. To Caragagola one fine summer's morning I strayed To view the green fields and trees of cool pleasant shade To welcome me kindly a sparkling lassie there came But for tons of bright gold of course I won't tell her name to his down by the lawn a my love, she goes herding her kine. I love to be near and hear her singing so fine. Her notes are like music, her laughter I'm sure is the same. But for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. In Balanagrahi I met my love coming to prayer. My heart was delighted to see my sweet Colleen going there. She's free from all pride and indeed I'm glad of the same. But for tons of bright gold of course I won't tell her name. If I had my darling alone together maybe traversing the mountains over the top of dunes far kissing her red lips indeed to none of compare but for tons of bright gold of course i won't tell her name if i am a crew and all the fine lads on the lee and all the fine farms from balani to balin agree i'd give the man more this call the young lassie there came but for tons of bright gold of course i won't tell her name
Come in, Donoghue. 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 Come So now, I wonder, would we have a pole cassette? We will. While they're still fresh, before they get too tired.
Anyway, I wonder, we might have another song. Timmy Joe Ford, I think he's out there on the corner somewhere. Oh, because it was early Friday morning as I cycled into town. The front wheel, it was wobbling and the mud had fallen down. The two legs of my trousers were tied up with bale and twine. My pension book kept telling me a pint would soon be mine. How are you, Mr. Murphy, says the postal clerk to me. Not too bad, said I, for a man of 73. A fox came to my house last night and stole me only duck. Buy a lottery ticket, she said it might change your look. So I took a little girl's advice and I gave to her a pound. Outside I scratched the ticket with the pin knife I had found. So I nearly dropped me trousers and grew a head of hair. When I realized that I was in a bloody millionaire. No more hay are tough to save and no more feeding calves. One kick on me big boot and the bike was in two halves. I headed for the anvil bar and I was feeling great. Then friends I never knew before came in to celebrate. Shortly after that I had a new suit on me back. A new red car outside the door with the telephone on the rack. The wife was wearing a blonde wig where her grey barn used to be. And the Wellington track had disappeared from just below her knee. I sat there admiring the new dress that she wore and the lovely set of teeth she had installed the day before. I held her all so tightly like when I was a groom and we looked rich and graceful as we danced across the room. T'was then I felt an awful pain I thought I'd surely die. I saw the ugly missus as I opened up one eye. With rollers on her old grey head, it nearly made me sick. Get up and milk the cow, she said, you old raven lunatic. It was only then I realised that it was all a dream. The cows were chewing in the field and the cat was at the cream. The bike was thrown against the hedge, my trousers had its shine. It was lovely while it lasted, that winning dream of mine. It was lovely while it lasted, that winning dream of mine. Thank you, Timmy Joe Ford from Blair Cross. Thank you, Timmy. No, what about my next one there? There, Michael Keller. He's about there. He's very comfortable looking. We send him on down here, Timmy. One day, as I went for a ramble, all alone by myself, I did stray. When I met with a fair young deceiver while strolling along the byway, for her eyes were as black as the raven, I thought her the queen of my land, and her hair was thrown over her shoulder and tied with a black velvet band. Well, next day I was hunted and captured. All alone in the dock I did stand. I was charged then with robbing and stealing, all for loving her black velvet band. For her eyes were as dark as the raven. I thought her the queen of my land. And her hair was thrown over her shoulders. And tied with a black velvet band. Now come all ye young men who are single. Take a warning from me if you can. Keep away from the girls with the dark eyes and her hair in the black velvet band. For her eyes were as black as the raven. I thought her the queen of my land. Was thrown over her shoulders 
untied with a black velvet band, untied with a black velvet band. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. All the way from Nakhnago. No. We'll have Mick Deneen there from Holly Hill now next. Well, I think that man was originally from South Kerry, if I'm not mistaken. Well, <laughs>